Class B, the prefrontal cortex and metacognition. Is attention necessary for consciousness? I want you to look at this picture of a speckled hen for just a couple of seconds. Now, did you actively and attentively look at every single speckle one by one? In a sense, there's no way you did. You didn't have enough time. And not only did you not count them one by one, but you probably didn't even really look at any of them individually. But did you see all of the speckles? I mean, in a way you did, yeah, you saw them all. Or if you don't think that you did, tell me, which ones did you miss? Was it the ones around the tail or maybe the ones around the neck of the hen? You probably can't answer that because what you saw was a hen covered with speckles. So yeah, in a way you kind of saw all of them. But how did you see them all without attentively looking at each of the speckles individually? How could this be? Well, this turns out to be one of the central questions in the science of consciousness, as we discussed in class A8. Historically speaking, it is a question that has long exercised the imaginations of scientists and philosophers alike. But even to date, it continues to be debated. In modern times, the question is often recast in terms of how selective attention and consciousness are related. By consciousness, here we simply mean the subjective experience of vision. Recall that attention is the process by which we boost the processing for some stimuli at the expense of others. So the question is just whether attention is needed for subjective experiences to occur. Now, based on your experience of looking at that speckled hen, you might think the answer is no, attentive looking is not needed for subjective experiences. But remember that in class 3.4, we discussed the load theory of attention by Nili Lavie. According to the theory, stimuli are filtered out early when our perceptual system is too busy. So maybe in those cases, we aren't conscious of the stimuli and attention might be needed some of the time? Well, things might not be as simple as that. When you look at the speckled hen again, do you really think that it looks that different, whether you're doing no task at all versus a challenging task, such as trying to find a word in the background written in green? That is, do you think that the subjective experience of seeing a speckled hen really differs depending on perceptual load? The answer seems to be no, not really. And that may be because load theory concerns how information is selected and how stimuli are processed and represented in the brain. But having a subjective experience might be more than just a matter of representing the stimuli. Let's go through the experimental evidence leading to this conclusion. Now this is a challenging class, probably the hardest throughout the whole course. There is a lot of information to integrate and a lot of arguments back and forth. So do take extra care, take your time, take breaks between sections and go through them slowly.